Hello, I'm Scott with Green Wind and other home energies. These are neodymium iron boron magnets that you can get from Walmart. Stock number 60001. And this is stock number 10075 at Walmart. These are ceramic magnets. These have split polarization. These have regular flat polarization. The top would be north and the bottom of them would be south. These are $3.48 for four of them. They are half inch by 12.7 millimeter diameter, just a little bit thicker than an eighth inch. These are three quarter inch diameter. There's 50 in a package here for $6.78, I do believe. These are split polarized. Looking at one, it'd be nor on the starting from the left side going up and down would be north south and then south north polarized like that. These neodymiums are polarized like this. How do you get this out of this? Put them side by side. These are not as powerful. Won't give you as much as you really want. Like this would be north in between the two magnets. And the next two would be south in between the two magnets. Still looks just, this looks just like this. These are the split polarized magnets. Notice how they're sticking together like this instead of pushing themselves all the way together like this. You can do all sorts of neat things for building with them. All right, now I've got these out of the package. <laughs> it might go to the edge, but you ain't shaking it off very easily. magnets ain't pulling apart very easy. When dealing with these magnets, these can cause blood blisters on you. Peeling them apart like this. Notice how my fingers I'm using as a pry to pull them apart. You don't want these to slap together. They're brittle and they break. Letting them snap together can crack them. That's not good to do that. <clears throat> don't let anybody handle you handle your magnets. <clears throat> you see, they're pretty stout. I only used a few at the end there just to make sure. And I'll set them out even farther apart. They normally, they're pretty powerful. See, they have to get real close, even with all that added magnet. Because they just do this. With two hands, but you bend it down till it curls, and you do that all the way around, and you wind up with a consistent curve that makes a perfect circle. And that's important for when you're trying to make this part and get rid of this. And this is Doug's, and Doug says he wants to go ahead and put magnets all the way from the edge in. So we're using to take up that gap that comes from the side that's about that thick instead of being flush take up that gap we're doing steel banding and that's what the steel banding here is for curling it around something like this and making it consistent taking the bends out sometimes you'll have to reverse curl it around to get it all perfectly smooth like this you bend it back you bend it one way and then you bend it back the other way and it comes out perfect like that here this is some real wide stuff which is going to help us to close, be able to close the motor and yeah, put the short screws. piece, the diameter that I really wanted. So that's what I'm working with now. I found another piece to put it over.
Okay, I've got it all pretty round, and right here I've got it pretty close to the curl of the motor. So, but this part here is still straight. I'm going to go ahead and attempt this. So first off, after it gets into the curve, cutting it square and flush. See you later, peace. One thing to remember, when you cut like this, it's going to curl this piece of metal. When you cut like this, it's going to curl the one you're taking off. You want this to stay flat. That's pretty straight. Next, I start putting it into the half of the mo half shell of the motor. This gets tricky. When I get about to this point, this point here wants to come up. At least I ain't got a big old long piece flying around my head. There's enough metal in the outside covers to make a full magnetic flux circuit. When I look inside here, I can see where the bolt goes. I don't want to make this come over that bolt. If it does, it's time to stop. Now I started here and I don't want one side of my motor he or my alternator heavier than the other so I, I want to cut where this one starts so I want to cut right about here I'm not going to put more than this in here so I'm just going to make me a quick mark right here and I'm going to take this out just enough where I can take the shears and cut it and I got enough for probably another motor so again I want this time instead of cutting like this I want to cut like this okay I've got this cover tapped on see how much deeper it sets in there now let's get this ring all the way down we haven't glued this yet we need to. Uh, what I'm gonna do off camera to save time is I'm gonna put glue inside this little gap here where the curl isn't exact that'll make it work a lot better and the magnets will be a nice uniform distance away I'm going to glue it all down here I'm going to start at this edge and I'm going to go all the way around on the outside and in between the two layers where it comes out to three layers here I'm going to squeeze this down I'm going to squeeze against everything and then I'm going to pinch this way which actually helps okay all of this is dried this is a diode this one here if I can get it in focus is a 1N four zero zero two a one in four thousand two this is a rectifier diode there's one in four thousand one two three four five and six and so on and the higher the number the more amps it can handle and the more, usually the more voltage all right these are dry as you can see uh, these are rubber bands from a bicycle inner tube now we're going to get on with this. I'm going to move my tools where I can get to them. Oh, I did find a pair of vice grips. A little handicap, so I had to use a, another piece inside it. I think I can just wedge these ends apart. Ugh. There we go. That's a rubber band.